Hi everyone, thank you for joining me to episode number 52 of AppSkin Tuesdays. Today we are going to do things a little bit different. I am not going to have a guest in the show and I'm not going to fake a guest. It's going to be just me. And I'm going to, instead of talking about some advanced capabilities of AppScan, I want to uh, do introductory videos. In the past year or so, we have recruited a lot of new customers, a lot of new companies in the cadence of about 40 or more every quarter, which is a lot. Many of them are going to our cloud solution because it's very easy to go to our cloud solution and start their the way they're journeying to application security. So I want to show new customers how to use ASOC. And this session will be about how you create your first application and how you run your first SaaS scan from the portal. Nothing about the automation, integrations. Hopefully it's a service that will help newcomers find their way in ASOC. So let's start. When you log in, you will see this screen. Usually when we like to show demos, we will show you something like this with all these applications and you go to the dashboard and you set a dashboard to a long time and you will see things happening and a lot of issues are being found. But before we get there, we start with this page. How do you start? You need to create your application. What is an application? Well, an application is whatever you want an application to be. It can be a mobile application, it can be a web application, web service, desktop application, a component of application, a mix of component of applications. You get my point. Why does it matter? Because when you define your application here, you are going to dictate how are you how you are going to manage the issues that apps can allows you to find. And that is important because if your application definition is too broad, it will be hard for you to track the information in the application and triage all the issues and separate them to the different development teams and developers that are working on the application. So let's create our first application. What is the name of the application? Let's call it my first application in AppScan Tuesdays. Does it make sense to have such a long name? Probably not, but hey, why not in this case? Second one is very important. It is important if you have if you are a large organization. If you have a, if you're a small company with two, three, four, five applications, eh, doesn't matter because all the applications in your case will be created equal and you will try to fix all the issues that are found there. Lucky you. But if you're a large organization, this is important. This means to the people that are running the application security program in your organization and your executives allows them to decide what is the risk of the organization. Basically, this means what will be the impact to my business if this application ever being hacked. We have all the way from, oh my God, oh my God, the world is on fire, I need to find a new job, to eh, not that important. Please don't leave it in unsp unspecified. By the way, what what is an un not that important? Uh, let's assume an internal application that doesn't have any sensitive information and people are just using for documentation, for example. And critical will be uh, the application that collects credit cards and personal information of your customers. And if it gets breached, you're in the news and, and maybe the application can run, the, the business can run out of business. So let's call it high in this case. Again, don't leave it unspecified. If you don't care about it, leave it medium or low, don't leave it unspecified, you will see in the future when you grow up. Business unit, again, small company, two, three, four, five applications, eh, doesn't matter, you don't have multiple business units, but if you are a large company, large organizations, this allows the people that are running this program to identify this application to which business unit it belongs to, um, for all sorts of reports, for example. So. In my case, I live, I work in HCL, and HCL is a large organization, and my business unit is called AppSkin for this case. And now we get to the asset groups. Usually, if you are the one creating the application and not the one managing the all the application security program, you will have one asset group assigned to you, maybe two. Asset groups is a way that we control the access to your application. Coming again to the small company, everyone have access to all the applications or the two, three applications that we have. But in a large organization, you should care because 
people shouldn't access applications and shouldn't mess around with things that they are not part of. Your administrator or your manager should probably associate you with the right asset group. If you see here default, it means that either asset group is not being used in your organization and it's not that great, or they didn't assign you to the right one, please make sure they do. Testing status, well, I haven't started anything, so I will leave it as non-started. There are additional settings here, and at this point, probably you don't care about them. We can revisit them later. This is an important time to mention. After I create, I can still go back and edit. I can go here, click Edit Details, and I can change all of this. So I created one application, but what if I have hundreds and hundreds of applications? Do I need to do that one by one all the time? No, I have an import application. I can download the CSV sample, see how the CSV is formatted and use that CSV to import hundreds and hundreds of application definitions. So going back here and going back to my application, I want to run my first scan. So I'll go and create a scan. AppScan offers four scanning technologies, DAS, SAS, IAST, and SCA. Where is SCA, you ask? I will show you soon. We'll start with DAST. What is DAST? Dynamic application security testing allows you to scan your application as if you were a hacker, you're scanning it from the outside in. You can scan web application, web service. That application has to run, but it can run in production or in staging. It can be publicly available for everyone in the world or behind a firewall only available for your companies and, and people in your network. How? We'll touch that in the next video. Second one, static application security testing, also known as SAST. This is scanning your application code. We can scan your application source code. We can scan your application bytecode. We allow you to choose. Interactive analysis. Basically, you are scanning the web application or web service like a DAST scan would do, but you have a man inside. You have an agent that runs on your application server, monitors how the application behaves as it is being executed or interacted with from the outside. For this video, I will focus on SAST. Don't worry, I'll still remember the SCA that we mentioned. If you're a regular on this channel, you know that we have many ways to do this automatically. Uh, I'll include here, for example, on the top right now, a video that I recorded with Pooja a few weeks ago on how to do that with Bamboo. But first time, usually people want to see what they're doing. so. What you want to do, you can download either your apps can go or SAS client util command line. I want to show you how cool the UI version of it is, but definitely people may choose the command line and they can use that also in their automation if they want to. So I'm going to download apps can go. Um, well, actually, to be honest, I already downloaded it. So I'll show you how it looks. So as you launch apps can go, First thing, it checks for update to see if there is any new version uh, to be downloaded, uh, which is pretty cool. You'd never need to download it yourself. So if you remember, I mentioned the software composition analysis earlier. When you use Apps Can Go, when you use static analysis with Apps Can, you can run static analysis or open source analysis, assuming you have the entitlement for that. If you don't have, reach out to us. We will be happy to help you there. But what is software composition analysis or open source as we call it here. Open source and only, or open source is part of static analysis, means that you are look, we are going to look at the application, identify all the third party components that are uh, linked into your application that are in the same folder that you are going to point us at. And we are going to evaluate to see if they have known vulnerabilities. We compare them with huge database that we have. And if we find that you're using a, a version that has a known vulnerability, we'll let you know and suggest how to fix it. In this case, I'm going to run a complete security scan. Now, you may ask, why shouldn't you do static analysis on those open source libraries also? Aren't those vulnerabilities? Yes, they are. But you shouldn't do that because A, it will take you a lot of time and time is important here. And the second, if you find something, will you really fix it? If so, great, great for you. Please fix them and submit your fixes so everyone will enjoy it. But until then, make sure that you're only scanning the parts that you want to scan. So I'm going to point apps can go at the application that I have. It is important to know that once I point it at my folder, 
Apps Can Go will scan everything in that folder. So if I was pointing it to this folder, to my project, it will scan all these three projects. And I don't want that. I only want it to scan this specific war. Point it to the folder that has only the application that you want to scan. If your application is in the same folder as other applications, create a new application, copy your application to just that application, just that folder and scan that folder. So AltoroJ, here we go. What Apps Can Go is doing now, it, eval it basically extract the jar file that, I, that is in that folder. And if there are other items in that folder, it will evaluate them also. And go over all the components, in this case, all the classes that I have in the jar file to see that it identifies them, that it knows how to read them. If there are jars inside, it will classify them, whether they're open source libraries that needed to be treated, as I mentioned, just with the software composition analysis, or whether they are my own source code that needs to be evaluated. Now, in this case, it's a jar file, it's a compiled bytecode, but at the same time could be uh, JavaScript or Python or whatever source code that you have. You can see here everything that was found and we are going to do open source evaluation on everything here, even if it is your own source code. Why? Why not? Doesn't take us time. But when we look at the Java parts, you can see a lot of components that are not going to be evaluated because they are open source and not part of your code. We know that based on the uh, exclusion list that we have, but if you see something that doesn't make sense, feel free to change it. You can all, you will only make apps can better. JavaScript all, was also identified. Again, we don't care about all the swagger JavaScripts because they are not part of your applications. We are going to evaluate them for open source. Next step, continue. What now? Apps can just generate the configuration file. Where can you find it? You can go here. Hey, here's the configuration file that I created. What's in this configuration file? All the files that we included, exclusion, excluded, if there were dependencies that Apps Can Go didn't identify on its own and I needed to correct them and fix, all this information will be included in here. I'll take this and run it with my Jenkins, with my Azure DevOps, with the bamboo that I mentioned earlier and showed you the video. But now, because we, want it, we mentioned that we want to do it manually, all I'm going to do is create a new scan. Apps Can Go will now try to connect to Apps Can and run the scan. Now it's the first time that I'm running Apps Can Go, so I need to tell it my key ID and secret. I'm going back to here, and I don't need this anymore because I'm running the scan from the outside. I'll close this, but I do need my API. I never generated an API key. So here, I'm going to generate new API key. I'm going to copy this. Naturally, I should save them also because uh, I don't want to need to regenerate every time. And I'm copy this. As you can see, I'm not hiding this for you because once this video goes live, I will have different key and secret. And I'm going to log in. Apps can now, apps can go now. Um, going to log into ASOC with these and show me the different applications that I have. And as you can see, I only have one application. I can change the name of the scan. Of course, um, this is my first demo scan. I can choose the depth of my scan. By default, it is deep. I'll leave it deep. It only means how, man how long will the scan take. I am not going to touch run as personal scan. We'll save that for another recording. I do want to get an update once my scan is completed and I will press initiate scan. What's happening now is Apps Can Go is collecting all the information from the application that I want to scan, everything in that folder as mentioned, based on the XML that we defined earlier. Uh, we defined that XML when we configured what is excluded, what is included, sold all sorts of dependencies issues if, if any of those uh, were encountered. And once this IRX intermediate representation of the application is generated, it will automatically be uploaded to my first application in Apps Can Tuesdays with the name as this is my first demo scan and it will run in ASOC. You don't need to sit here next to your computer and wait. So we will leave it here and go back to ASOC. So just to finish the demo, I went back to AppScan on cloud to my application after AppScan Go finished 
generating the IRX, uploading automatically to AppScan on cloud, running the cloud, running the scan there. Scan has finished. I can look at the fixed loops or the issues, go to see all the issues. And that is the first demo. Thank you.